hello everyone uh, welcome to the session on navigating modern authentication in automated testing by anton angelov um anton angelov cto at automate the planet is a visionary leader in automated testing he has dedicated his career to developing innovative solutions and educational resources as a sought after speaker he shares his expertise with the global community and us today at selenium conference 2024 join us in welcoming anton angelov to the stage hi everyone thank you for having me all right thank you for having me again on this great conference and uh, in this presentation uh, i plan to talk about how we can handle the modern authentication um in automated testing so uh to master automated authentication testing there are several critical points to address Uh, if you're working for features like captcha it can be bypassed by setting specific hidden fields similarly for two factor uh, authentication enabled forms we're going to see that one time codes can be generated through web api calls and then it put directly um it put directly in a uh, form registration to account activation or resets often uh, emails are involved right and in such cases uh, third party services can be paired with web driver for efficient automation and for rapid execution uh, and testability we can consider creating unique test users for each test uh, via dedicated endpoints uh, and this can also facilitate uh, faster logins through cookies so these are uh, a few of the topics that we are going to cover Uh, thank you for having me again. Uh, many of you know me from my book "Automate the Planet," or for uh, many of uh, the books that I wrote about automated testing. And here is our agenda. Um, I will try. Just the the first topic will be a little bit more theoretical because the demo is not so interesting. Uh, but after that, we're going to see many coding examples and live demos. Uh, we are going to start with single sign-on. Uh, then uh, we'll proceed with passwordless login uh, and one-time passwords via emails and SMS. We're going to integrate some third-party services in our uh, Selenium tests to handle that. After that, we'll proceed with some uh, security stuff about uh, how to bypass capture and uh, how to handle two-factor authentication, and we'll end up with um, making our tests. faster and more stable with uh, working with cookies and web apis before we proceed with the actual topics about single sign on i'm going to uh, use a demo app uh, that i created specifically for the purpose of uh, this presentation uh, this presentation is based on three videos that i recorded for lambda test youtube channel about single sign on passwordless login and mastering authentication of course uh, there are more about 2 hours of uh, content you can watch them free on youtube but i try to summarize everything in this particular presentation uh, so this demo app it's freely available on github uh, just let me walk you through it uh, first you have a regular form with the captcha enabled uh, with remember me and everything uh, when you go to the profile when we are logged in Uh, we can update the profile. We can log out. Uh, if you logged in with Google or Facebook, we can revoke even the access. We can set up two-factor authentication, and uh, also in order to present and uh, you know uh, to give you uh, the possibility to to play uh, and experiment with uh, such an application, uh, we have a working version for passwordless login with email. This means that uh, you can tag your real email you're going to receive a code and when you provide the code uh, you will be logged in automatically the same is valid for uh, phone numbers with sms we have the single sign on with google and facebook we can register a user we can activate reset a password and even change statuses of the users the database um, is in the form of json file and um, uh, as i said uh, the whole app is available here on github under automate the planet it's called test login app this application was developed uh, and it's written on node.js which means that it's completely portable you just need to install node.js and start the server that's it you just type uh, not server.js and everything starts that's it 
Uh, the app is very basic. Uh, we, I used Bootstrap and jQuery for the front end. We have two front end uh, pages with a lot of HTML and uh, the whole server with all of the endpoints, as you can see, it's quite large, is in a single file called server.js and uh, everything is here, that's it. Uh, and you need to provide uh, all of the secrets for uh, the third party services like SendGrid, MailSwork, Twilio and others that we're going to use. Uh, you need to provide the keys here in .environment and everything will work. You don't need anything else. Uh, so let's get started. I'm going to use this app and also I'm going to use three separate code repos uh, for this re uh, purpose. Uh, as I said, they're based on the Lambda test uh, videos. Uh, they're under the automate the planet again. Uh, the one is how to automate single sign-on, master and authentication, and passwordless login. So you can clone them and directly will have, have access to all of the code. So let's begin with the single sign-on. What is the single sign-on? Single sign-on allows you to log in once and then access multiple, um, uh, multiple systems without needing to log in again. You have a main place called Identity Provider where you log in. Examples are uh, Google and Facebook, or uh, some companies have their own. And after you log in, you can access different services. Like for example, you can use uh, your Google login to access music apps like Deezer or Spotify. And uh, these uh, single sign-ons, they usually use two protocols, uh, SLML and OAuth2 and others. We're not going to discuss the protocols themselves right now. We don't have the time. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's when you automate such uh, logins and you need to handle them in your automated tests, a few stuff are important. First, you need to make sure that when every time when you start your uh, web driver session, this means that if you use a new browser, a new session, this means that probably you need to handle these uh, cookies consent screens. Then, uh, as I showed you in my demo app, uh, um, when when you log in the first time uh, with a single sign-on, you will have to accept some um, to allow the service to use your profile and give you access. This is just one time, and it won't depend uh, on the session itself. And after that, maybe you will need some scenarios to test when you revoke the access here, what will happen, right? Um, so this is one thing that you need uh, to be careful about. Then, of course, you need to make sure that uh, the whole transfer of data is encrypted with HTTPS. Maybe you can use uh, some of the new uh, bi-directional APIs of Selenium to capture the traffic and see that it's under HTTPS. Uh, you need to test, uh, um, uh, you know, when, when you log in that uh, you have access to all the services, of course, and the same is valid for the logout. And uh, some more interesting test cases here are to check uh, users might have an email login already and then try the single sign-on. Both methods should show the same account, right? And if I already have an account. Or if I don't have one and log in with the single sign-on, then probably uh, we will, um, we will, you know, uh, this will create an account uh, in the system. Uh, also, what will happen if you update your email in some of the platforms, in the service provider or in the other platform? Will this continue to work, right? Um, so if we need to handle the automation stuff, uh, I suggest you to check and ask your developers to give you access to these admin panels here uh, that you see on the screen. Uh, these admin panels, they provide you, uh, you know, for all of the different environments, you will have a different test up here uh, with different settings. And the most important part of this test app is that you can create test users. You don't need to go through the normal regular registration of Google or Facebook and provide phones, etc. They have an API for that. And you can use the API in your automated tests, right? Uh, and you can define uh, the different scopes. The scopes are uh, for giving you access, for example, to the username, to the email, to the photo, to the profile picture, and other information. Um, 
The same is valid for Meta or for Facebook. Uh, we have a demo app. We can go live or uh, you can stay in development. And also we can create users for here. But you need to be careful because sometimes, uh, as you can see here in their documentation, they sometimes they temporarily disable this feature, um, but they have a really nice uh, REST web API for creating test users. Um, and also you have a lot of different settings here for uh, age restriction, GDPR, country restrictions. This might be important uh, for, for example, for Europe or for the United States, if you need to restrict some countries or when you create test users, you can specify a, a different age there so that you can check uh, how your application is handling them. Uh, and uh, as I said, sometimes no matter what scopes uh, you requested, it's, it will be up to you, up to Facebook and Google whether they will return the data or not. This means that, for example, if your application um, needs the username, uh, but Facebook doesn't return it, then you will need to check what happens, right? When, when this is not there or the profile picture, what your application, how it, it will handle it, right? Um, and this happens, right? Now, uh, let's discuss the passwordless login for uh, for the rest of the presentation, you will see a lot of code. So the passwordless login is an authentication method where a user does not need to enter a traditional password to gain access to an account. Instead, other methods like OTPs or one-time passwords, biometric data or magic links uh, sent via email or SMS are used. For example, GitHub added support for passwordless login. Slack sends magic links. Dropbox support passwordless authentication to and many other popular websites. Um, and why does passwordless login exist? Remembering numerous complex passwords is challenging and passwordless systems, they offer smoother user experience. Traditional passwords uh, can be fished, guessed, or even brute forced. And passwordless solutions, when implemented correctly, they reduce these risks. Users often reuse the same password across multiple platforms, and this is posing uh, a security risk. And eliminating the need for passwords diminishes this risk. Um, and you need to keep in mind that this uh, one-time passwords, their time, this is a time-sensitive code, which is sent via email or SMS, or it's generated by an app. And this code is entered in a place of a password, as we are going to see in a minute in the demo. It's usually valid just for one login session or transactions. And these magic links, they are usually unique URLs sent to the user's emails. And when they are clicked, it authenticates and you cannot use it again. Um, and, you know, unlike static passwords, data, uh, data like OTPs, they change constantly and are valid just for a short duration. Um, and many passwordless methods, they rely on uh, on the user to have access to specific device like your phone for SMS uh, or um, a specific application or biometric scanners. And uh, passwordless doesn't mean that uh, you're a single factor. You can combine methods uh, like requiring both fingerprinting and one-time passwords for adding security or two-factor authentication. And let's see now the demo, uh, as I said, uh, the demo app now supports here, um, we can provide here an email. Uh, in, in, in order to handle this in our uh, Selenium tests, uh, I'm going to use a service. First, my application is using a service called SendGrid to send the emails. And after that, I'm going to use a service, third-party service called MailSwerp that uh, provides SDKs, client code, for creating unique inboxes or emails for me on the fly with the code. So each of my tests can generate a unique inbox with a specific email like this one here. Uh, and I can receive the emails here. This is one of the emails. Your login code is something here. 
and we need to extract it. Of course, I don't need, uh, I can check all, all of my emails here, but uh, besides that, um, we're going to do that with code. Let's now test that. Uh, I can provide this email here. And when I click send, um, I will receive a code now. And when I present the code, let's see, uh, we need to refresh. And one zero seconds ago, I have a code. And when I provide the code, I'm locked in. And as you can see uh, later during the presentation, I, I will show you how uh, every time we have a unique user here registered with the API. Uh, but right now I walked in passwordless, no passwords, just the code. This code is unique every time. And as you can see, you have been walked in with passwordless. Now let's see how we can do that with code. Uh, first, I'm going to uh, use this particular uh, service mail swap. Of course, we are not going to use the UI. But uh, I open their documentation, uh, mail swap documentation. Uh, keep in mind that this is a third party service for some extent, uh, some of the features are free, but when you exceed the quota, you need of course to pay for that. Uh, I'm not doing an advertising for them. Uh, in my uh, video on uh, Lambda Test YouTube channel, I presented uh, a few more solutions. There are a couple of them, you can research them. This is just one example for that. Um, so they have different SDKs for various languages. I'm going to use Java. So when you open the Java, they, they have a video tutorial, but basically we need uh, this Maven uh, dependency. We need to copy it for the, their client. We need a few imports. We need to initialize the API client, the default client with your key. Usually we put this key as uh, an environment over Arbo to keep the secret. We don't commit it with the code. We need an inbox controller, which is responsible for creating every time a unique inbox for us with a unique email. We set some timeouts and uh, that's it. Uh, you just call create inbox with defaults. This will create the inbox. And after that, you have a method called get email address and we'll get the email and that's it. And also, uh, as you will see uh, in my uh, demo code, uh, we have one more service called wait, wait API controller, which is responsible for waiting for the emails. So uh, this is the comes from how to automate passwordless login in Java Selenium GitHub repo. As I said, it's freely available. Uh, it's a regular JUnit Selenium setup. We have JUnit here in the Maven. WebDriver Manager, Selenium, and uh, I installed already the mail swap client here. Uh, just follow the documentation, nothing more. Um, and here in the email passwordless login tests, um, I, I have uh, basically created the same test that I showed you uh, when I clicked on the app. I have static variables to the API client, the inbox controller, and as I said, uh, the API key is present as an environment of variable. So in the setup, I am initializing the client, nothing interesting, again, copy paste it uh, from the documentation. And uh, my tests where uh, I'm logging successfully using email, I'm navigating to my Node.js demo app, clicking email, the email tab, I'm creating the inbox controller with defaults. And um, I, I'm going to debug the code in a minute. Uh, yeah, let's do that now. I'm going to debug the code so that you can see it in action. This will start the browser, navigate to the demo app. The inbox controller will create a completely new email uh, for us. And every time this will make your test much more stable because uh, basically when you troubleshoot your test and if you have bugs, etc., you can directly send this particular user to uh, your developers, right? And uh, as you can see, this is completely new email here. I'm going to click send code. And then we're going to, uh, I'm initializing here from their SDK, this wait for controller API. And as I said, this wait for controller API 
give us this method wait for latest email where I need just to provide the unique inbox and it will wait for us. So I'm going to continue the test now and this wait controller API will wait for a few seconds to receive the code. And as you can see now, uh, we are we have now the code here 230739. Um, I have here uh, a method. We are here just a step before sending uh, typing the code here. I have uh, uh, one more method called extract code, which uses regex expressions just to extract the numbers because as you saw in the ML, uh, we have this code is the digits, right? And we need just the digits. Um, and before clicking the logout button, let's see that everything works. As you can see, we were worked out with this unique email that we created right now with code, which is excellent. And now uh, the test is green. Uh, also, this gives you the possibility sometimes to interact with emails, uh, which is really great. Uh, when you create the inbox, we can get the email, send the email. Uh, and when we receive the email, we can load the email body directly in the browser. Uh, of course, uh, this is a little bit tricky because we get the HTML body, write it to a temp file. And then as you know, we can open the temp file and interact directly with the HTML. But this is a great way how you can test your emails because we need to test them, right? Uh, especially if your company is specializing in um, email marketing campaigns. All right, uh, let's continue. Um, we have one more demo for parsuitless login, but with SMS. Uh, it's basically the same, the same thing. It's the same thing, uh, but uh, here, instead of email, I need to provide a phone number. Uh, and in order to handle phone numbers, I used another service. It's called Twilio. And this Twilio, it's a very popular service for sending SMS, making phone calls and other solutions, but we can use it for testing as well. Um, they have other SDKs as well. They have a Java SDK. Uh, when you buy a phone number, when you go to their service, you can reserve a number for a few dollars for a month. Uh, and then from this particular number, you can send SMS, MMS, fax, voice calls, everything. And uh, basically for my video on uh, Lambda Test YouTube channel, I bought two numbers, one to send uh, the SMS and then one more to receive them. Um, and it's pretty easy again to install it. You have, uh, I have the, the code configured here. They have um, here another Maven dependency for the Twilio. Here it is, Twilio SDK, right? You can find it um, on, the, on the Maven repository. And um, it's even easier to work with it. Uh, I have another test class called SMS Passwordless Login Tests. Uh, for the Twilio uh, SDK, again, you can check their documentation, it's very detailed, but we need a few things. Account ID, account and authentication token. Again, I am getting them as environmental variables to. Uh, to keep them as a secret. And after that, when I sent my, um, also in order to initialize the client, you just need a single line of code. Twilio in it, providing the account ID and the authentication token, that's it. And after that, when uh, we send SMS, uh, there is just a single method called get latest SMS. And this is the code from their documentation that it's going to read the latest SMS. Uh, and uh, again, I have a similar code for extracting the code from the SMS because it's similar to the email. It's not so interesting. Um, now, uh, for both cases, especially for the SMS, since you cannot create, I mean, it will be much more expensive to create and uh, buy a phone every time for each particular test. Most probably you will have uh, bought for each month, I don't know, 10 phone numbers or five, uh, or even one, it might be fine. 
but you need to be careful because when you run and if you run your test in parallel, when you use this code uh, and you want to read the latest SMS, uh, everything can messed up, right? So you need to be careful and consider that when you run your test in parallel. The same is not completely valid for uh, emails because if you use my approach when you create a unique inbox every time for each test, this problem doesn't exist because every time in each parallel test, it will have a unique inbox and they, they won't collide between each other. Okay, let's proceed with uh, the presentation. Now let's proceed with CAPTCHA. I am sure that all of you know what CAPTCHA is, but it stands for Completely Automated Public Turing Test to Tell Computers and Humans Apart. I know it's wrong, <laughs> but it's a type of a challenge response test used to ascertain whether the user is a human or a bot. And the primary purpose of CAPTCHA uh, is to prevent bots uh, or automated programs from using uh, various types of uh, computing services or collecting certain types of sensitive information, such as uh, email addresses, phone numbers, etc. And here you can see various types of capture, right? Uh, I'm not a robot, etc. And uh, I'm going to present you this, I'm not a robot. You, you saw it on my demo app. Uh, this is called ReCAPTCHA. ReCAPTCHA is a capture system that enables web hosts to distinguish between uh, human and automated access to websites. Uh, it's free service from Google, and it's very widely used nowadays since uh, it supports major screen readers. Uh, we have two versions. We have version two and version three. Uh, in case you're using uh, ReCAPTCHA version two, you can put the site key in the secret, also known as the test keys. And these keys are uh, helping bypassing the CAPTCHA uh, verification request as a result. Uh, your automation case can run seamlessly. However, uh, if you use ReCAPTCHA version 3, ReCAPTCHA version 3 allows you to verify even interaction uh, is uh, legal or not without any user interaction. It is just pure JavaScript API returning a score uh, and giving you the ability to take action in the context of your website. For instance, requiring additional factors of authentication, sending post to moderation, or throttling bots that may be scrapping content. Uh, here is uh, the website uh, for the capture version three. Um, I, I have integrated that. I mean, I follow just the, their documentation to integrate that. Uh, in my application. For example, when you open it here and when we go to index and if I type capture, you'll see that we have this diff. This is the main diff for the capture and I have the data site key. Google or capture is here. In a minute, I'm going to explain this hidden field because we use it to bypass the capture. Uh, but yeah, uh, if you need to check and test uh, I suggest to, to test uh, uh, the capture manually every time, uh, even because I'm going to show you ways how to bypass it on uh, your test environments. But you need to verify that your application accepts only valid capture, that the capture code is case sensitive, that error messages are displayed properly uh, when user enters an incorrect capture, that uh, the capture uh, is displayed properly. Uh, on many different screens and devices, right? Uh, that it's generating every time on refresh, uh, or some captures have this refresh button here that uh, you can play it, uh, that the copy paste is not working. Um, and some more interesting uh, cases, uh, is it working with CDN uh, or content delivery network or an optimized websites? Uh, especially this is important to check it if you have pictures uh, in the captcha. In 10 years ago, I tested such a website that was under a wall balancer and uh, certain requests, for example, one of the requests is hitting one node of the wall balancer and, and then the second request is loading the image, which is on a second node. 
which is behind a CDN, and it can get quite messed up if you don't test it well. Um, so yeah, uh, let's see how, how I uh, handle that uh, and how we can bypass it. As I said, it's loading here, um, but if even if you, in your test, if you just click the diff, this won't work. So uh, in my server code, uh, if we search for the login, uh, for the login endpoint, as you can see here, uh, I have a switch. And inside the switch, as you can see, we have the capture bypass. The capture bypass, uh, as you can see here, we have one void. This capture bypass codes, this is very popular technique uh, in certain cases. It's really important to make sure that this test code is, is present only uh, on your test environment. This shouldn't be present uh, on your live environment. Uh, this can be done. And this capture bypass, this is a unique code that if I get it, and if I set the unique uh, hidden field that I showed you before, uh, let's see it. Right now, uh, when I have the unique code, as you can see, I have the capture. Let's search for bypass. Here's the capture bypass. I can type F12 uh, to edit it. And now I can set the value to my grid here. And now I can type the test username and the password. And I'm not going to check. I'm not a robot. And as you can see, we were locked in. But if I don't have that, I mean, if I don't set it, and if I don't click it, as you can see, invalid login because the capture uh, wasn't pressed. And uh, how we can do that uh, in, um, uh, in uh, Selenium WebDriver, uh, I have a method here called bypass, bypass capture. I mean, here is the regular login using emails, right? I'm just doing the same thing that I showed you. Uh, I'm just typing the John and the password and clicking rem remember me. And uh, this is the important part here, this bypass capture method. In this bypass capture method, the thing that it's doing is doing the same thing. I mean, I'm finding the uh, here the bypass the capture bypass hidden field because it's not visible. And then using the JavaScript executor of WebDriver, I'm setting the attribute to my unique GUID that I showed you that it's using to bypass. And that's it. I mean we can uh, navigate directly to the profile uh, after that. Uh, when I click login, uh, we'll be successfully logging. Let's try that out. As you can see, we have the capture. We are typing the John, the password, the remember me. And you can see that we haven't clicked the capture. Uh, and when I continue, here we have the username and we're locked in right now. And I'll continue. There are other methods as well. Uh, uh, in, in a webinar that I did in the past, I showed another way how we can uh, bypass using uh, some AI for, um, you know, when you have um, this version of the capture where you can hear it, uh, you can record the sound and then pass it to uh, the AI to convert it to text. This works as well. And now let's talk about two-factor authentication. Uh, 2FA or two-factor authentication, uh, is an extra layer of security used to ensure that people trying to gain access to an online account are who they say they are. First, the user will enter their username and a password, and then instead of immediately gaining access, they will be required to provide another piece of information. This is the second uh, factor confirm. 
uh, its additional password to answers uh, to, for example, questions like what is your first uh, pet's name or uh, personal identification number. It can be a physical device like smartphone, security token, smart card. Uh, it can be uh, like includes biometrics, fingerprints, retina scans, and voice recognition. Um, and now, um, I'm going to show you, I mean, of course, probably you won't uh, use Google Authenticator directly in the app to generate this code and copy paste, right? Uh, so we need another way. And uh, the way to do that, uh, before we move to the two-factor authentication um, demo, I'm going to show you that uh, I'm, I'm going to skip to the next topic about registering unique users for particular tests. And this is exactly uh, what I did here. Uh, I have um, I have um, a factory called test users factory. This specific class is responsible for creating unique users in my um, in my demo app. I have specific web endpoint that I'm going to show you in a minute. Why we need that? Because I want unique users with two-factor uh, authentication enabled. Uh, because right now, if I go to the profile, as you can see here, for this particular user, I don't have set up uh, a configured two-factor authentication. And um, here I'm using a library called Faker to create uh, like random username, emails, passwords, phone numbers, etc. However, I combine them with uh, the mail swap service. Uh, I basically created a separate class uh, for creating these unique inboxes instead of copy pasting it uh, in uh, each particular test, right? Uh, so here, this mail swap service is responsible for creating a unique inbox. It has a static method, returning the inbox. And then we have one more method called uh, wait for the latest email that is returning the email. That's it. And this test user factory, the thing that it's doing is that uh, it creates a test user um, object. Basically, I'm uh, requesting a unique inbox for the email. I'm going to set a real email in the mail swap. I'm going to generate a unique password, a unique email, and a unique username. And then uh, I'm going to, uh, as you can see here, we have create test uh, user with real email. And I have an endpoint, I'm using a REST assured. Uh, I'm pretty sure most of you know this um, popular library in Java for making web requests. I'm calling the one of my endpoints, which is called create this user. And this create this user, if I search it in my server JS, is responsible for registering a user uh, when I provide the username, the email, the password, the phone, and the status. It will as I said, uh, my demo app is relying on a JSON database. It's basically going to create this um, user in my JSON database so that I can find it later. But it's similar uh, no matter which database engine you use. Uh, so I'm going to push it here as a JSON, that's it. But also I have one more, one more uh, endpoint called create this user with two-factor authentication enabled. Um, we are checking whether the user is still there or not. If it's uh, already, I'm going to a return user already exists. And then I'm going to, as you can see here in this test object, uh, I'm using a special library called Speakeasy. There are such libraries for uh, generating those codes with code in any language. So um, we are generating the secret and, and the code and everything. Um, so based on this secret, Later, uh, I can generate the code for my user. Uh, so basically, this endpoint will create a test user with real email and with two-factor authentication enabled. And when I go to uh, uh, my uh, here, logging successfully using email uh, to bypass two-factor authentication, I'm calling this factory, test user uh, factory create defaults with 2FA with real email. We are bypassing the capture. And in this particular moment here, I have another service called authentication bypass service, 
which can generate the 2FA token based on the user ID, because I already have uh, the user secret based on it, I'm going to generate the token itself. Basically, this is this method will do the same thing. It will return the same code as Google Authenticator or no matter which authenticator you use. So as you can see here, this is just calling another endpoint generating token to FA in my server, which will use the same library responsible for requesting and verifying uh, these two FA tokens. It and based on the user's secret, it will generate uh, the proper the proper code. Um, so basically, I'm using an endpoint to generate um, to generate uh, these tokens. Let's see it in action. Uh, I'm going to debug it now. We are creating a new user with the API. Um, in a second, it will it will be typed. As you can see here, they're typed. And you will see now, because my user now re requires to factor authentication token, we need to enter that. And as I said, uh, I called my authentication bypass service. And now as you can see, if we hover, you'll see that we have 732632, which is the code that I, I will get uh, from, that's it. And uh, one more thing, uh, if you want to log in with cookie, uh, faster login with cookie, uh, in my application, I actually, uh, when, we, when we log in, like uh, right now, if we go to the application, uh, many of these uh, websites, they have this uh, authentication uh, cookies set, right? And the same way I'm generating um, generating uh, this grid here, I can use my authentication service to generate this particular authentication cookie and set it via Selenium uh, to be able to speed up the login, right? So I have another endpoint, and I, I, I suggest you to ask your developers to do it yourself for your system. In all of the projects that I'm working on, we have such ways to generate this authentication cookie. This will significantly speed up your tests. Uh, basically, based on the display name, the password, and the username, I'm calling this specific generate hash function, and I'm generating this authentication cookie. And later, uh, we, we can set this via Selenium uh, as a cookie. Um, here, authentication value, uh, when I get the value here, and the user ID, that's it. Uh, I think we covered uh, everything I wanted. Uh, thank you for the attention, and uh, maybe if we have a few minutes for questions, I can answer, and later, during the handout sessions, uh, we can still chat. Yeah, thanks a lot, Anton. Um, this was really so exciting. Um, completely lost track of time looking into all these insights. I'm sure this was very insightful for the crowd as well. We have a couple of questions. Um, there's one from Vijay where he asked from where we will get the bypass key. Uh, the bypass key uh, regarding the two affair, right? Yeah, uh, you're generating it. I mean, um, if I return to my code, every user in your database will have this secret hash in your database. Based on this secret hash, your test endpoint, based on the user ID and the secret hash, can generate this code. And usually for C Sharp, for Java, for Node.js, we have specific libraries or SDKs like Speakeasy for Node.js that accept the user ID and the hash, and they generate these codes for you. Basically, Google Authenticator is doing behind the scenes the same thing, right? Because they have your, uh, through the QR code, they, this way they, uh, they recognize your secret hash. And in this way, they, they generate the code. Uh, there is a question regarding the WebDriver Manager's dependency. Yeah, it's automatically encoded. I just uh, put 
within my project uh, is backward compatibility if someone is using an older version of Selenium. But you are right, uh, Benjamin, uh, if you're using 4.11 or above, you don't need WebDriver Manager. There is just one more question I'm going to answer for two-factor authentication testing in real time, we need developer help. Is it true? Yeah, it depends whether you have uh, whether you have um, access uh, to uh, to the developer code, most of the code. Uh, yeah, all of the code is available on GitHub, as I said, under Ultimate Planet uh, repos. Uh, and uh, as I said, uh, probably you will need some developer help. Uh, I, I feel comfortable, uh, you know, to clone if I have access to the developer code and uh, to walk through it because I have a lot of experience. But sometimes if you're not feeling um, Okay, with the developer code, you can ask your developer and teammates to help you with the things that I showed you. This is completely fine, and they will be really happy to speed up the test and uh, have uh, faster feedback from the test, right? All right, guys, uh, thank you for having me, and uh, I will meet you in the handout section.